So here's my video for chapter 15 homework. Um, there's a lot of this homework that I still don't understand. I don't know if it's just because the homework problems are extra hard um, or if I really don't get it. Cause I, I don't know, I feel like I understand a lot of the concepts, but I think I just, it was really hard to, to apply a lot of them in the homework. Um, but anyways, here it goes. Uh, I started with number 10. Um, and yeah, I just kind of used all these equations. Again, I didn't, it's been a while since I've, I've kind of worked through this homework over time. And so it's been a while since I've done a lot of these problems and it was hard for me to understand the problems in the first place anyway. So it's going to be kind of hard to explain some of these. Um, but I was able to use all of these equations, um, did a lot of cross products here to eventually come up with my answer here. Um, number nine, I, I didn't understand at all. I didn't even know. I would have just been copying down the um, the answer key at that point. So I didn't, yeah, I didn't really know where to go from here. Um, so yeah. Um, number eight. Um, yeah, so this was a no slip problem that I was able to work through. Um, I just kind of gradually worked through all of these different equations um, to eventually come up with my acceleration uh, for A, B, and C. Number seven. Um, this one took me a little while too, but I eventually was able to work through it. Um, drew my free body diagram up here. Um, and then, yeah, you can say I just have these equations solving for V A and V B. Um, solving for my acceleration in B, acceleration in A, and then eventually acceleration in D. Um, which I kind of wrote out my equation here, rewrote it again, because I started it again later today. Um, I started it after, I started the second part after I'd started the first part and went through the homework later and then came back to it. So, yeah. Um, number six, this one I thought was one of the easier ones. Um, it took me a little while to grasp the concept of instantaneous center rotation. Um, but that's basically all this problem was. You can see I have my different, um, drawings for instantaneous center rotation and just use that to, to find my answers here. Um, number five, um... Let's see, I was able to use instantaneous center of rotation on this one as well. Um, when I was looking through the answers, it didn't seem like that's what they used, but that's what I went ahead and used. Um, so you can see I have my free body diagram here. I just kind of drew a picture up here. I thought I was gonna use it, but um, I ended up not. I drew another picture and um, you can see I have all my cross products here and all my equations here. Um, there's my answer. Number four, um, I, again, use instantaneous center of rotation for this one as well. Doesn't look like they did in the answer key. Um, but yeah, you can see I have all my equations here, my cross product. Um, yeah. Um, number three, looks like I used, uh, again, it was a while since I've done this one, but if I remember, remember right, I used instantaneous center of rotation on this one as well. Um, I didn't draw any free body diagrams, so I don't think I really needed to. But, um, but yeah, you can say I have all my equations here. Um, number two, this one was hard for me to kind of work through. It seemed like it was kind of, um, it felt like you had to kind of go through a roundabout way to kind of get to the answer. So I followed the answer key kind of heavily on this one a little bit, um, but I was able to understand it eventually. Um, but yeah, it kind of was just uh, figuring out how much, how much is gonna like change. So I guess my theta B, wherever I put that, my theta B right here, figuring out what that is, um, and using that to eventually find my theta A, and then using my theta A with my theta B, that should be theta B to find time. And for the last problem, um, 
Again, it was a while since I've done this one, but here's all my equations here. And that's how I solved for that one.